Welcome to the second patch blocks tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about how to work with signals, how to add and multiply them and do other things with them. Um, which is pretty straightforward, but I think I'm going to talk a bit about the theory as well so that you get like a good understanding of what's actually happening behind the scenes here. So uh, let's start with just adding and multiplying. So we've got like two sine waves here. Uh, and one is uh, going into this add object, the other one in this multiply object. So this one will basically be added to a certain number, or a certain number will be added to it, like 0.5 or something, whereas this one will be multiplied by some number, it could also be 0.5. Uh, you could also plug like a different signal in here, but for now it's just a fixed value. So this is basically a mathematical equation if you look at it. We've got like the sine uh, oscillator here that produces values, which then uh, where then certain values get added to it and the result will be what comes out of here. So it's like reading an equation from the left to right. Same here. Now, I would like to visualize this a bit that you actually see what's going on here, how the signal will look like after you have added something to it or multiplied something to it. I'm going to use this software here which comes with OSX called Grapher and um, I prepared like a little function here where I can type in the frequency so this is what our oscillators and patch blocks would give us. Values between plus 0.5 and minus 0.5. The, the distance between the highest value and the lowest value that our oscillators produce is called the amplitude. And the frequency is how many cycles it goes through within one second. So if I increase the frequency here, you can see it goes through way more cycles. But now back to the original question, what happens if I add something to this signal? Let's say I add not 0.5 to it. And you can see what happens is it shifts it upwards by 0.5. So now all the values are between 0 and 1, cycling around 0.5 as the center point, instead of cycling around 0. If I subtract something from it, it just shifts everything down. Or I could also add a negative number to it, it's the same as subtracting something. So adding and subtracting doesn't change the frequency, doesn't change the amplitude of it, it changes the zero uh, level. It basically shifts the entire signal up and down. So the center of an oscillator. So this is useful if you want to use your uh, sign tone for something else and you want to translate it into different signals. To understand this, how, why this is, if you think about a curve here or a, a wave signal, it consists of like infinite, am an infinite amount of points. And what you do here by adding something to it, it basically adds that value to every point that's on there. Which, if I add something to, let's say, uh, this point here, minus 0.5, it will then be 0. So it is actually a pretty simple concept. Now what happens if I multiply something, uh, if I multiply the signal with something, with a fixed value again? Let's multiply it by 2. Same concept again, every point that was on this wave will now be multiplied by 2. So what was 0 stays 0. What was not 0.5 though will now be 1. In effect it increases the amplitude. Multiplying it by 2 will double the amplitude. Multiplying by 0.5 or dividing by 2 will half the amplitude. So while adding and subtracting shifts the signal up and down, multiplying it makes it louder or quieter. which is these two operations here. Here you can make the signal louder or quieter, here you can shift it up or down. The shifting up and down is not very common, um, but multiplying it is pretty useful because it changes its volume. Now let's say you want to change the volume not with a fixed value but with a dynamic value. You want to change it over time. 
So instead of having a constant tone, for example, which goes like beep, you could change the volume of it, going like beep, having this, this uh, rise and fall of volume. And that is called an envelope. You sort of wrap your constant level, constant volume tone uh, around something or in something that changes its volume. That becomes more clear later on once I graph this as well. But um, let's just look at the tools that Patchblocks provides to do so, uh, which are called envelope generators. There are two. Uh, one is an ADSR, and the other one is called Line. Line is actually a bit simpler to use. How it works is you give it an array of values separated by a comma. Make sure there's no comma after the last one. And it always starts with zero. That's like the initial value it starts. And then you give it a time in seconds it takes to go to the next value. And then you specify a time again that it then takes to go to the next value. And you can continue doing so. So in this case, it takes 200 milliseconds, or 0.2 seconds, to rise to a, vol uh, to a level of 1 and then it takes half a second to go back to zero. So it kind of looks like, like this. You could also use different values here. It could rise up to 100 if you want to, and you can type like a list as long as you want in here. Um, but for now, we just want to rise up to one and a fall down to zero. And then we multiply what comes out of here with our sign tone to shape the volume of it over time. How the line works is every time it gets a transition from zero to a non-zero value here, which is called a trigger, it will go through what you've programmed here and then stays at the last sort of uh, level till you trigger it again. So in this case it just goes up to one, goes down to zero, stays at zero, so it spits out nothing, till you trigger it again. Then it starts from the beginning all over again. And because we get values here from zero if the button is not pressed, and one if the button is pressed, you can just plug this in here, and whenever there's a transition from not pressed to pressed, this line envelope will be triggered. Now let's have a look at how this actually looks like. Let's use a higher frequency, let's use a thousand hertz, it's a bit more dense. And let's look at a line envelope. So here you can see it starts at zero, goes up to one, and then goes back to zero. Now we want to multiply this with this so that we have a volume of zero here, maximum volume here, and decreasing volume there. And that looks like this. You can see here the signal is not changed at all in volume because you multiply it by one. Here it's about half volume, and here it's zero volume. So while this rises, the volume rises. While this falls, the volume falls. Let's listen to this. There you go. And this is also what it's called an envelope. It kind of wraps this tone you see here in the background in this uh, function of changing values so that it becomes this one here. Okay, so this is one way how to, how to shape a tone, how to change the amplitude over time. Another way, what you can do with multiplying the amplitude of a signal is to multiply it with another signal. That's called amplitude modulation. Now first I'm going to explain this a bit in theory as well. Let's say we have two signals. One is lower frequency, 100 Hz, and another one is 1000 Hz. And we want to change the amplitude of this one based on the, f the other signal, the lower one, so that it basically goes louder and quieter and louder and quieter and louder and quieter uh, based on the frequency of the other signal. So you would multiply one with the other one. However, because you have values between negative and positive, you would at some point also multiply it with a negative volume, which first of all would flip the signal and second of all the, vo um, the values that we get here are only up to 0.5 so if you multiply it straight with the other signal, we would only get a maximum amplitude when we want the maximum amplitude of half, because this goes only up to half. That's also one of the reasons why uh, most of these the oscillators in patch blocks go between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5, because if you add 0.5 to it, 
you get this nice range between 0 and 1. Now if you would use this to multiply it with the other one, it would change between a multiplication by 0 and a multiplication by 1, which is pretty cool. Then we have this change of like silence and maximum volume of the other signal. And that looks like this. No, actually, looks like this. So we've got here, in the um, this is the signal of 1000 Hz, which gets multiplied by the signal of 100 Hz. So when the 100 Hz signal is at 1, the 1000 Hz signal will be at maximum volume. The other signal is at 0, the 1000 uh, Hz signal will also be at 0 amplitude. They have different names as well. The high frequency signal here is called the carrier frequency, and this is the modulating uh, signal, or the carrier, carrier signal and the modulating signal. How this looks in the patch flux editor is as follows. We've got the two sine tones here. One, the carrier signal, will be multiplied with a modulating signal, but the modulating signal will be shifted up by 0.5, so that it will produce values here between 0 and 1. Now, as you've seen in the previous tutorial, by multiplying what comes out of the controls, you can um, bring it into different ranges, like this, for example, will produce values between 0 and 1000, depending on where that slider is, and this one between 0 and 100. Let's listen to how this sounds like. If I put this all the way down, the second one, which is the modulating signal, you can actually hear it sort of sweeping because it's a very low frequency. But if I bring this up into audio range, it produces interesting harmonics. Uh, yeah, and that is basically the end of our tutorial. I hope this gives you a good insight into the kind of math behind the scenes almost, and uh, also sparks a few ideas what you could do with envelopes and uh, with signals modulating other signals. I hope you had fun, and there will be more tutorials soon. Uh, yeah, enjoy patch vlogs. Bye-bye.